In this tutorial, we're going to build a clone of the infamous Space Invaders game together. Here's what it looks like. We can move around with the arrow keys, shoot lasers with the spacebar. Of course, because we made the game ourselves, we can tweak it in any way we want. We can make the enemy stronger by making them fire faster, or we can increase our own firing rate, making the game much easier. At every step of the way, I'll point you to the files on GitHub, so you can follow along at home. Let's jump in. We'll start with some basic skeleton containing just the images and the sound. The first thing we need to do is to get these starters files from GitHub. This is just a basic directory setup containing the image assets, CSS, and the sound files. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the JavaScript code, but we'll quickly walk through the HTML and CSS together. The files we'll start out from are on GitHub in the start folder. Download the folder either as a zip file or from the command line, copy the folder and make a work folder that will contain the, your working copy. The images and sounds come from kenny.nl, a website that contains tons of free game assets. The site is awesome and you should definitely check it out. I've downloaded the Space Shooter Redux assets and renamed them. Once we have everything set up, we'll start by looking at our index.html. This contains the basic skeleton of our app. In the header is a link to the CSS style sheet, and that's about it. Note that we load our JavaScript file at the very end of our document, which is the best practice. Loading JavaScript blocks the page, so putting this at the very end of the page allows us to load all the other stuff, like the CSS and the background images, faster. Our page contains a diff with the class wrap, which we just style in CSS to take up the whole page. The actual game is rendered in the diff with the class game, which is currently empty. All elements will be created from our JavaScript using the document.createElement function. Let's dig into the CSS file. Each of the things on screen, sometimes called entities or sprites in games, will have a CSS class. We have one for the player, one for the enemy, one for our lasers, and one for the enemy lasers. Each of these elements is positioned absolutely, with the X and Y value in the middle of our image. This makes it easier to move our elements around. It is important to note that this is not how HTML normally works. Normally, elements are positioned from the top left. So, to move the origin point to the center, we need to perform a little trick. What we do is set the width of the element, then use a negative margin half of that. So, if our player is 40 pixels wide, the margin left is set to minus 20 pixels. This moves the center point to the middle of the sprite, making it easier to control. One last cool trick is the moving background. You probably noticed that we're already flying through space even though we haven't written any JavaScript. This is a CSS animation. Our background consists of a repeating pattern of the same image. That image is 265 by 265 pixels. In CSS, we can set the background position to vertically shift this pattern. We do this in a CSS animation, setting the position from 0 to 265 pixels. And because the pattern tiles, position 0 and position 265 are the same, so the animation repeats seamlessly. Now, let's start writing our code. The first thing we want to do is have our player on screen. Our player character is an image of a spaceship that we move around using CSS transforms. There are two basic ways in CSS to move elements on the screen, using the left and top styling attributes or using CSS transforms. I've tried both, and CSS transforms turned out to be faster. That's because the browser can put these elements on separate layers and move them in hardware, instead of repainting the whole screen. So to begin, we're going to define the area of the game, its width and height. We use a fixed value of 800 by 600 to make things easier for ourselves. We're then going to write an init function that initializes all entities in the game. In this case, our player, and later on also the enemies. We then call this init function at the very end of our script. The first thing we do in the init function is to select the element we want to place our entities in. That's the diff with the class name game. So we'll use document.querySelector to select this container. Note that I use a dollar sign in front of variables or constants that refer to DOM elements. This is just a convention I use, but allows me to distinguish between abstract things such as numbers, lists or strings, and visual things like elements in the DOM. 
We then pass the game container to the create player function, which we'll write in a moment. Because other elements will need the container as well, passing it around means we only have to select it once. Our create player function takes in this container. The first thing it does is figure out the position of the player. But wait, where do we want to store this position? I like to create a global variable called game state that contains the entire state of the game, the positions of our player, all the enemies, and all the lasers on screen. We could potentially retrieve the position of the player by reading its transform attribute. However, there are a number of attributes that are not stored in the DOM element, so storing everything in an abstract representation makes more sense. It also means that we can easily save and restore that state in case we want to implement saving. The position of the player is in the middle of the screen, so the game width divided by 2. That's our x position. Our y position is a little bit off the bottom of our screen, so the game height minus 50. Because the origin point or center of our player sprite is in the middle of the sprite, we don't have to subtract the width or half of the width of the player here. Very convenient. Then we create our player element. This happens in three stages. First, we create the element using document.createElement. We specify the element we want to create, which is an image. Then we set its attributes on the element, for example, the image source and the class name. Then we append a child to an existing element in the DOM. That is our container. We also want to set the position of our element. This happens by setting the CSS transform attribute. Because we know that we will need the same functionality for our enemies and lasers, we will write a function called setPosition that takes in a DOM element and an X and Y position. In this function, we use JavaScript template literals to write a string where parts of the string are variables. By using the special dollar sign curly bracket syntax, we can let JavaScript know we want the value of our variable here. We then use our setPosition function in the createPlayer function. And that's it. We now have our spaceship on screen. We can't move it yet, so let's implement that immediately. We want to move our player using the arrow keys and use the spacebar to shoot. In JavaScript, we can listen for key events using key down, key up, and key press events. The key press event doesn't actually capture the arrow keys, so we can't use that one. Instead, we'll use the key down event for now. We'll listen to events on our whole document or window and call the onKeyDown function, which takes our event, which we call E. This event has a whole number of properties. Let's log them to the console for now. Let's press our left key. And the property we're interested in here is the key code attribute. Let's log that, then press the right key and the spacebar. So the left arrow key returns the key code 37. The right arrow key has key code 39. And finally, the spacebar has key code 32. Since we don't want to hard code these values, we'll write constants at the top of our program that give names to these magic values. In our onKeyDown handler, we can write a condition that checks for the given key. This is not our final movement code, but for now we'll just move a bit to the left when the left key is pressed, and a bit to the right when the right key is pressed. So we first update our player x value in our game state global, 
Then we select the player DOM element and we call set position to change the player image to the correct position. And we're done. We can now move the player with the left and the right keys. Note that the animation is quite choppy. That's because we rely on our keyboard repetition rate to call on key down repeatedly. There's a much better way to do this, which we'll talk about in the next video.